This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Just follow me on this next one. I think you'll really enjoy what the court has to say about the Art Ask Agency and their demand for an uh, injunction. I think it's a preliminary injunction or temporary restraining order during these trying times. This is before Judge Seeger, the Honorable Stephen C. Seeger in the Northern District of Illinois. This case involves counterfeit unicorn drawings. So you know it's going to be good. The complaint includes a few examples of products that allegedly infringe plaintiff's trademarks, which offer striking designs and lifelike portrayals of fantasy subjects. One example is a puzzle of an elf-like creature embracing the head of a unicorn on a beach. An elf-like creature embracing the head of a unicorn on a beach. I gotta see what this one looks like. Yes, here it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's zoom in. Oh, look, did <laughs> you see this? Wait a second. <laughs> Artaskagency.com, webmail login, trademark admin, grumpy cat eBay, litigation funders. They, did, they didn't take out their toolbar. 2018 OT request. I don't know what OT request is. O overtime? I don't know. Uh, acti some kind of activity stream. Google Drive for TRO and seller defense from something. So Art Ask Agency's... Uh, uh, the, the person who took this picture has some interesting bookmarks. Let's just let's just leave it at interesting. Hold on. If we assume that this is like a lawyer's PC, that grumpy cat thing is kind of interesting because there was a lawsuit about grumpy cat, wasn't there? Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe uh, the like art ask agency back. is responsible for, uh, for, for the grumpy cat lawsuit. We'll have to look that up. Somebody look that up. So here we have unicorns, lots of unicorns. Here we have unicorns crossing horns in a heart shape on a purse in the upper right. In the top middle, we have uh, another purse or handbag with a single unicorn and a circle surrounded by, uh, I don't know, beads or gemstones or something. Um, we have various unicorns in the upper left, a woman riding a unicorn holding a scepter, a woman petting a unicorn on the nose, another woman nuzzling with a unicorn on a side of its face, and then the two unicorns crossing horns again. On the bottom left, we have a unicorn in a night scene below the moon in a castle or something. Then we have a unicorn, then we have a woman holding a unicorn by its head. There, there is, though, an entire unicorn attached to the horse's head, so uh, it's not a godfather situation. And then we have what looks like a protractor and angle measure with a woman's face on it. I don't see the unicorn there on the bottom right. Okay, so that's that's what this lawsuit is about. One example is a puzzle of an elf-like creature embracing the head of a unicorn on a beach. So that was the bottom middle example. Another is a hand purse with a large purple heart filled with interlocking heads of two amorous looking unicorns. There you the judge has noticed the unicorns look amorous. I I don't know. Do you agree that those unicorns look amorous? I don't know. That might have been projection. That might have been projecting just a little bit. I don't know what about the horse's face. What what does a horse look like when it's amorous? I, I, I don't spend enough time around horses to know what an amorous looking horse's face looks like. There are phone cases featuring elves and unicorns and a unicorn running beneath a castle lit by a full moon. Meanwhile, the world is in the midst of a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you think the judge is trying to put things in perspective? The president has declared a national emergency. The governor has issued a statewide emergency. As things stand, the government has forced all restaurants and bars in Chicago to shut their doors, and the schools are closed too. The government has encouraged everyone to stay home, to keep infections to a minimum, and to help contain the situation. The United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois took action last week to protect the public, issuing a general order. On March 16th, the executive committee issued an amended order which holds holds all civil litigation in abeyance. Last week, plaintiff filed a motion for a temporary restraining order. So this is on 318. So last week would have been 311, which is still in the middle of everything, right? And requested a hearing. This court thought that it was a bad time to hold a hearing. So this court moved the hearing by a few weeks to protect the health and safety of our 
community, including counsel and this court staff. Waiting a few weeks seemed prudent. Plaintiff has not demonstrated that it will suffer an irreparable injury from waiting a few weeks. At worst, defendants might sell a few more counterfeit products in the meantime, but plaintiff makes no showing about the anticipated loss of sales. One wonders if the fake fantasy products are experiencing brisk sales at the moment. <laughs> so now's the time, people. Go and get your counterfeit unicorn products while Art Hask Agency is down. Yeah, while you still can. <laughs> I'm being I'm kidding, by the way, Mr. Mr. Ask Agency. On the flip side, a hearing, even a telephonic one, would take time and consume valuable court resources, especially given the girth of plaintiff's filings. Remember when I said that we were at like docket entry 27 already? Like, like, look, right up here, docket entry 27, like already, where it, we just, the complaint's been filed and we're at, we're at 27 already. Uh, let me see what some of it is actually. Complaint, appearance for an attorney, motion to, for leave to file under seal, memorandum in support of a temporary restraining order, many, many sealed documents, notice to the parties, motion for a hearing, motion for miscellaneous relief. The court's order delaying things. An emergency ex parte motion for the entry of a temporary restraining order. Document 23. Emergency ex parte motion memorandum. Vac vacating the March 19th hearing date. Order in light of the situation, which I love, I love how the judge is also calling it a situation. The court encourages all parties and counsel to take precautions, be reasonable, and use common sense. And then there's, yeah, it says restricted, the rest of the documents not publicly available. Well, let's continue because there's even more of this and I'll read to you. I'll, you know what? I'm going to even pull it up on the docket. Let's just pull it up on the docket. I'll, I'll pay the dollar for it to pull it up on the docket. All right. So we'll get to the docket in a moment. Let me finish what we're doing with this here. And the proposed temporary restraining order would require the attention of innocent third parties and create a cascade of obligations. Plaintiff wants to force financial institutions to lock down accounts and require domain name registries to shut down websites, for example. Plaintiff requests an order forcing innocent third parties, such as Amazon, eBay, PayPal, Alibaba, Western Union, plus Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter, plus Google, Bing, and Yahoo to spring into action within two or three days. Either the order would be a nullity, or it would distract people who may have bigger problems on their hands right now. In response, Plaintiff Art Ask Agency and its counsel filed a motion for reconsideration. They asked this court to rethink its scheduling order. They want a hearing this week, telephonically if need be. By the way, if you're an attorney, um, when you are asking the judge to reconsider something, it's usually something big. And it's it's one of the last things that we want to have to do is to tell the judge that they're wrong and please reconsider. They're asking the judge to reconsider a scheduling order during the situation. I mean, in case the judge wasn't already clear, like, let me just add to that, that you don't, you generally just don't do this. I mean, there, there's got to be some kind of really big deal in order to do this. And you're going to see this again later. There's another one of these types of things against the state of Pennsylvania. And we'll see whether we think that one's also frivolous or not. Plaintiff recognizes that, that the community is in the midst of a situation, but plaintiff argues that it will suffer irreparable injury if this court does not hold a hearing this week and immediately put a stop to the infringing unicorns and the knockoff elves. To top it off, plaintiff noticed the motion, as in plaintiff gets to choose the date by looking at the court's calendar and, and picking a date. And so plaintiff picked a date for March 19th, a day that has been blocked off on the court's calendar, which is revealed on its webpage and has been blocked off for several weeks. The Honorable Stephen Seeger will not be holding court on Thursday, March 19th, says the website. Meanwhile, the clerk's office is operating with limited staff. Phone conferencing is available in emergency situations only, where resources permit. The court can still hear emergency motions, but resources are stretched and time is at a premium. If there's ever a time when emergency motions should be limited to genuine emergencies, now is the time. 30 minutes ago, this court learned that plaintiff filed yet another emergency motion. They teed it up in front of the designated emergency judge and thus consumed the attention of the chief judge. Yeah. 
this is an example of what not to do. I mean, I, I maybe someone's life is at stake because these knockoffs are being sold. I haven't seen the judge refer to anything that gives me any sort of exigency or urgency. The filing calls to mind the sage words of Elihu Root. About half of the practice of a decent lawyer is telling would-be clients that they are damned fools and should stop. Oh, that's great. About half of the practice of decent lawyers is telling would-be clients they are damned fools and should stop. The world is facing a real emergency. Plaintiff is not. The motion to reconsider the scheduling order is denied. And, and like I said, it does not stop there. Let's, let's peruse the docket for a moment. Here is the docket. I'm going to just move myself off to the, uh, the side here a little bit. And there's the complaint on March 9th and a motion for a temporary restraining order on March 10th. Temporary injunction, temporary transfer of domain names. They want transferring of domain names as injunctive relief and a temporary restraining order. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, here's the memorandum in support of the temporary restraining order. Here is a request for a motion hearing. It looks like the judge set it for April 13th. Here's a miscellaneous motion. Here's a judge's order. And then here's a motion for an emergency ex parte motion for temporary restraining order, temporary injunction. So they filed it again. There's another memorandum in support. This is the order we just read. And then here's some text entries that I wanted to read to you. Minute entry before Steven Seeger, plaintiff's emergency ex parte motion for the entry of temporary restraining order, temporary injunction, temporary transfer of domain names, temporary asset restraint, expedited discovery, and service of process by email is hereby denied order to follow. And then here's the order. In light of the public health situation, the court encourages all parties and their counsel to take precautions, be reasonable, and use common sense in pending cases. So when a judge has to order you to use common sense, they are saying that you're not. You're not using common sense, but they're trying to be polite about it. In the previous general order, the district court extended all deadlines in civil cases by three weeks. Parties should assume this court will accommodate reasonable requests for extension. The court will grant a six-week extension of fact discovery if requested. Parties should not take depositions before April 17th unless they are telephonic and all parties and witnesses consent. Even a telephonic deposition often requires an in-person meeting to prepare the witness, so telephonic depositions can only go forward if everyone agrees. If a party or witness wants a deposition to take place in person, it will have to take place after April 17th. Needless to say, that date may change as the situation evolves. Parties should continue to make progress in their cases when possible, but in a manner that is consistent with safety and health. In the meantime, continue to work together cooperatively in the best traditions of our shared profession. The court thanks all parties and their counsel for their patience and understanding during this difficult time. Again, you shouldn't have to say that. So if you are saying that, you're basically directly accusing one of the parties at least one of the parties, for not being patient and not having understanding during this difficult time. And this is currently, I believe, an ex parte situation, this, this art ask agency situation. There isn't a served party, a defendant that is responding, I don't think. And so the judge can only be talking about one of the parties, but it, it doesn't end here. Let, it keeps going. So let's see what the judge has to say in their March 18th order, docket entry number 31. Plaintiff's ex parte motion for the entry of a temporary restraining order is denied without prejudice. Injunctive relief is an extraordinary remedy and is not granted routinely. And I say this as someone who got a temporary restraining order which was an extraordinary situation. Perhaps the most significant single component in the judicial decision whether to exercise equity jurisdiction, an injunction, and grant permanent injunctive relief is the court's discretion. It is a fact-specific inquiry and depends on the circumstances of each case. Here, plaintiff makes next to no showing that it will suffer 
irreparable harm. Let's scroll up here. Do you remember there was an emergency motion for temporary restraining order, uh, temporary injunction, transfer of domain names, asset restraints, expedited discovery, and service of process by email. And they, they had exhibits, a declaration of Maria Strid, exhibit one, Michael Hurl, 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 uh, exhibit one, exhibit two, exhibit three. So they've got two declarations and four exhibits, and they still couldn't make any sort of showing as to the irreparable harm that they're going to suffer. What is irreparable harm? It's really, really, it, is, it means harm that can't be remedied by a court order. It means um, someone's getting away with something and we're not going to be able to stop it by merely giving a money judgment. Um, my example was back when StarMazer and StarMazer DSP, well, so StarMazer DSP was, is, is on Steam. And back in 2000, was it 16? 16 or 17? I think it might have been 16. Um, a disgruntled contractor of StarMazer's developers took down people's videos and the game itself through DMCA takedown notices that were illegitimate, despite Imago Softworks having a temp uh, having a, uh, a work for hire clause in their contract with that person. So we ended up going to court and getting a temporary restraining order because taking the the game down off of Steam and and DMCA copy striking everybody's videos on YouTube that had made videos about the game was definitely causing irreparable harm as the person who was doing it was under no, they, there was not going to be a court remedy that was going to be able to, you know, even if they awarded Imagos a hundred thousand dollars, this person was never going to be able to pay that. So that's definitely irreparable. And I'm sure that their thing reads something like that here, like these people are getting away with money and if with but when the time we catch them they're just going to shut down their business and walk away with the money and we'll never get the money so irreparable injury that's not quite the irreparable injury that they're talking about here the gist of the motion is that plaintiff will suffer harm from the sale of counterfeit unicorn products on the internet I, I kid you not, that's what it says. But plaintiff gives this court no information about the anticipated loss of sales, not even an estimate. Plaintiff doesn't even tell this court anything about its own sales, let alone anything about the volume of sales that it will lose without immediate court action. Maybe the loss of sales is de minimis, or maybe not. De minimis means like so minimal it's, it doesn't count. But the point is plaintiff made no such showing. A generic allegation of harm without more does not weigh heavily in the balance. On the flip side, one of the most important considerations before awarding equitable relief is the public interest. Yes, really it is. When you when you have a temporary restraining order or preliminary injunction request, you must actually make a showing or, or show evidence or make an argument about how your need for the injunction outweighs the public interest in not having an injunction. And so there's a great public interest going on right now, isn't there? Hmm. Here, plaintiff proposes a bloated order that imposes extraordinary demands on third parties, including a wide array of technology companies and financial institutions. Plaintiff's proposed order would require immediate action in a matter of days from firms that have nothing to do with this case. In the meantime, the country is in the midst of a situation. Not, that's my words. And it is not a good time to put significant demands on innocent third parties. All of them undoubtedly have more pressing matters on their plates right now. To put it bluntly, plaintiff's proposed order seems insensitive to others in the current environment. Simply put, trademark infringement is an important consideration, but so is the strain that the rest of the country is facing too. It is important to keep in perspective the cost and benefits of forcing everyone to drop what they're doing to stop the sale of knockoff unicorn products in the midst of the situation. Without a showing of immediate real world harm, and I think they mean irreparable harm, the court cannot impose significant demands on third parties in the current environment. That said, this court denies the motion without prejudice. Later, perhaps plaintiff will make a better showing. But for now, plaintiff has come up short by a wide margin. As a result, the court expects plaintiff and its counsel to follow the general order, including the admonition about emergency motions. So the judge calls it an admonition and tells them that he expects them to follow it. As in like, by the way, you're not following the order. You, you've got to follow the order. 
Yes, yes, we mean you, plaintiff specifically by name. You have come up short by a wide margin. You have been found wanting. You have been judged and found wanting, and and you must obey. <laughs> it's, I can't believe it. It's it's unicorn drawings. Uh, it's unicorn stuff. I mean, I get it, but it's just unicorn stuff. Uh, I hope you found that one as fun as I did. So thank you for joining me. That is our show. Let us know what you think of that story in the comments below. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel. As we grow and expand our operations and get ready to take this thing to the next level, I want to thank the people who are making this possible with their financial support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law. Thank you in the month of March to the $50 plus supporters, Wes Delge, Aspernari, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, and Anders Thornfeld. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the screen in front of me and on the LED panel behind me. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Stay safe, wash your hands, keep your social distance, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.